Okay, so let's try to take this game and make it into a 3D game so that we can see the scrolling combat text also works there. Um, if we look at um, my asset fold here, I imported the standard assets because I would like to use the 3D character here, first person uh, character they have. To implement them, you just need to go to assets, select import package, select characters and then import the packages there. So if I want to do a 3D game, I need to make a new scene. And actually, I need to jump back to the scene because I need the combat text manager and my canvas in the next scene. So basically, I can go to prefabs. I can create a prefab of the combat text manager by dragging it in here. And I can create a prefab of the canvas by dragging that in as well. Okay, when we've done that, we can create the new scene. So file new scene, um, delete the camera, go to the standard assets, characters, first person, prefabs, FPS controller. When you have add that, we need to add some ground the FPS controller can walk on. So we are going to say create 3D object cube. And then we are going to take this cube and make it larger like this so now our character has something to walk on then we are going to add a capsule by clicking create 3d object and capsule and this is the enemy just put him somewhere here um, and let's add a light by going to create light directional light and if we play the game now we should have a character here we can run around with and jump with and so on okay so now we have that we should add the um, prefabs we created before so add the canvas and add the, the combat text manager and the combat text manager needs to reference a canvas and this is the canvas right here Let's just do like this so now it's referencing this uh, canvas here um, and then we need to create a new script the script that we need to create is a enemy script. So go to scripts folder, right click, click create and select a C sharp script and call it enemy. And this script doesn't really need to do anything much. It just needs to, um, basically it needs to instantiate the scrolling combat text. So if input dot get key down, key code dot uh, C, if we press the C button, then we're going to say combat text manager dot instantiate dot create text instance sorry create text transform dot position and it's going to write minus thirty or something color dot red and it's fourth not a critical strike right now. And then we save. Uh, when we have saved this, we can jump back into Unity. And then we need to take the enemy script here and put it on the capsule. As you can see here, so now the capsule has the enemy script on it. If we run the game right now, you see the text is written here in the corner, down here, just like that. And that's not what we are interested in doing. So we need to go to our canvas and we need to select world space and we need to select the camera the player's camera here just like that so if we play our game again then you'll see it's it spawns up here very very large and unreadable on top of the the enemy and now i fell down so we need to adjust the size um we can go to our prefabs select the text and say that this size maybe is 30 that's actually fine so we can go to our canvas here and say that this size should be uh, 0 0.03 0 0.03 0 0.03 so now we are adjusting the <coughs> excuse me now we are adjusting the screen size uh, the canvas size to make sure the text has the correct size Let's see what happens. 
I can see I can see it from this angle now it's 30 30 30 it's still a little too large for my taste um, let's try to make it 0 to 2 or something 0 0.22 let's go with that where is the see here okay so now it it's writing 30 but um, you might have noticed that when I see it from the side or when I see it from the back the text is actually turned the wrong way around and that's not uh, very useful we always need the text to turn towards us so to make the text turn towards us we'll need to add some extra code to the combat text script so let's try to go in here and go to our combat text and in here we're simply going to say transform dot look at transform um, actually uh, let's say combat text manager dot instance okay I'm, I'm writing wrong sorry uh, transform dot look at we need to take the combat text manager dot instance and here we need to be able to reach the player we need to have a reference to the player somehow so either the easiest way to do that is um, or the best way to do that is to go to the combat text manager make a public variable uh, called game object as a player and then we're simply going to go to the combat text to say instance dot player dot transform that position okay so right now we are saying that we should always look at the player's position. So if we save this and jump into uh, Unity here and run our game. Ah, okay, of course we get a reference exception because we haven't set it up. We need to select the combat text manager, of course, and then we need to take the player, which is the first person character here and drag it onto this empty slot. So let's try again. And now the text is following, but as you can see, it's actually mirrored. It's flipped the wrong way. So you can see it's 03 minus instead of minus 30 here. And that's not what we want. We of course want it to be 30 instead. So let's see what we can do about that. Just gonna mute this, it's actually very annoying. When I'm walking, I can hear it. Um, so basically to flip this around, we should say two multiplied by transform that position minus this so we are multiplying by two um, yeah we're multiplying this by two and minusing the position let's try if we multiply by two we should get the opposite direction here and there we go okay so now we have the text in the correct um, rotation and it's flowing up here and it's uh, fading out and everything but we can't make critical strikes yet um, if we look at the text here and we enable the animator we might get some errors here because the animator is set to as you can see we can't the text is very very small now as you can see and that's because we enabled the animator and apparently I'm not sure why whenever you enable an animator even though it's not playing it still changes the size of the text somehow so Basically, we would have to um, create a new animation for the um, for, for the 3D as well. So to do this, we can actually just change the old animation. I think. Let's try to find it here. We have the critical animation um, window animation. I'm not even sure if we can open it like this. I guess I have to select the prefab and text there we go okay so if you select the prefab text and you move it into the window and have this animator open then you should be able to see um, see the text uh, see the not the text of course the, the animation so you can see here it starts in 0 0.3 that's way too low it needs to start at 1 or something um, if you want to check check what it should start at you can simply select your text disable the animator run your game and instantiate some text 
and then you see they all start at 1, each and every one of them. And so instead of starting at 0 0.3, we should start them at 1. So select the text in your scene, start it at 1 here, 1, 1, 1, and then maybe in the middle here. Uh, let's try to put this one. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Um, under the canvas um, sorry I'm just thinking that's why I was silent for a while um, and if we go to our scene here and we look at the text so we should try to make it larger now it should be one 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 and if we want to make it larger let's try if we make it two is it then twice as large yeah okay so let's try to make it two 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 um, so if we take the text and we open the animator window again. Sorry if it, this got a little uh, messy. So we start at 1, we enlarge it to 2, and we reduce it to 1 here again. And we take this and drag it onto the text, and that's basically it. Delete this again. So let's try to see what happens now if we run it one more time. Uh, if we go to prefabs, select text, animator, scene. Play again. 30, 30, yeah. So now it has the correct size, as you can see, without um, being too small. So the next thing we need to do is to be able to create these critical strikes. Uh, if you don't know what I just did, because I think I missed a little round and maybe it's confusing, I select my text, I dragged it into the scene, I selected the window, I went to animation. Um, I selected the text here, I made sure the scale for the first part here was 1, I made sure the scale for the middle one was 2, and I made sure the scale for the last one was 1. That's basically that's basically it. Sorry that I, I was messing around before. Um, and let's close this tab and let's close this tab here. Okay, so now that we have that we should be able to make critical strike. Let's simply just um, make a test here. Uh, it was in our enemy here, so if I copy this and paste it, and I add it to button, let's say if, for example, yeah, let's say if, then I'm going to make a critical strike of 60, and it's true. Let's try to see how that looks. Save this, jump back in. So still if I press the C button, everything looks fine. Press the F button, it critical strikes, as you can see. But you can see that it spawns underneath our um, enemy. And we are not really interested in that. We want it to spawn exactly on top of the enemy. We could either calculate an offset or the easiest way is to add another game object that we will spawn it on. So basically we can take our capsule, our enemy here, and create empty game object, find it. We could find it somewhere there. And then we simply just take this empty game object here and we put it put its position just above the enemy and we just call it spawn and we put it as a child object of our capsule which is our enemy right now so the spawn is up here then we go to our enemy script and inside our enemy script we will make a um, Let's just, we can also get child transform dot get child zero dot transform dot position. Let's just do that. So now we are taking the child's position, which is that new um, that new spawn point we just created. As you can see here, we have spawn point. It's the first child, and that's why we are saying uh, we want to instantiate the text and transform the dead child zero transform that position. So let's save, jump back into Unity, and see if we press C, you'll see it spawns over the enemy now. And if I press the F button, we have some nice critical strikes here. And we can always see this text no matter where we're standing, because it always faces us. Even if we're very close, it's going to face us. Yes. Um, that's basically it for this tutorial. If you have any requests, something I wasn't clear about, something you want to add, 
um, any f requests or features or something, then please write them in the comment or write me a private message or an email, then I'll figure out what I can do to edit this tutorial series. Um, I'm going to upload this project, so if you're interested in it and you want to support me, then please follow the link in the description below and get the project. If you're a patron, then you can simply go to the patron place and simply download um, this project. Um, the structure of this project is going to be, I'm going to create one project with 3D um, set up in it, and I'm going to make another project where the 2D is set up, uh, so it's easier for you guys to um, yeah, to play either 2D or 3D set up. Um, yeah, else I'm going to make some if statements that are annoying to make sure that 2D and 3D doesn't interfere with each other. So you are going to get the two project and all the scripts with comments, of course, and um, every single sprite. Yes. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching, and please leave a comment to uh, let me know what you thought about the tutorial series.